cycling season has just started. There's so many races, actually struggling to keep up on all of them. One season though that I'm really looking forward to is women cycling. With the return of Tour de France, it's meant to enter a new dimension. And Govic is part of that growth, sponsoring UA team and FDJ Nouvelle Aquitaine Futuroscope. One of the riders, Brody Mate Chapman, is here in Girona. And today we're going to spend the day with her. Okay, let's go for a bike ride. I just put this power meter on this bike. It's not working, but it doesn't really matter. I don't really need power meter today. It's annoying when you don't have it, but also like if you only depend on power, then your life sucks. When you don't have it and you need it, it's frustrating. But otherwise, if you say like, go full gas for two minutes, I know what full gas feels like. They say that like, time on the bike is what you need for TT. That's what I'm doing. I don't know, Girona is so good because there's so many different roads, different directions. And also for me, like you can also do a flat ride on a TT bike easily. You can also go to the mountains, you can go on the trails, like a lot of gravel roads and gravel events. So it has something for everyone, you know, so you don't get bored. And different people to ride with. For me, that's important, like. I imagine it's very social as well, right? Super social, yeah. Like, I think if you're a social person, like me and my boyfriend, then Jerome is a good place to live. Because like in Australia, I started riding from riding in groups and going on bunch rides and doing crits. Like, it's all social and like friendly competition. And we do that here a little bit too. You know, racing to signs and chopping off. <laughs> with a group. <laughs> so I'd push who's a, I'm more likely to push myself with other people than by myself. <laughs> Are you gonna race me, me today? <laughs> yeah, when we get to a really flat section, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Up the hills, I think you're dropping me already. Uh, I'm very, very stoked to have Gobik as our sponsor. Uh, the kit is just like, it's comfortable and it looks good. I dead set think we have the best kit in the Peloton. When I saw it, I was really happy, really excited. And uh, the people at Gobik really care about what we have to say. So they're super open to feedback. I think we're the first Women's World Tour team they've sponsored. So um, we've had some really open discussions with them and uh, so far it's shaping up to be really nice. I hope we can uh, get the yellow jersey for them. Thanks Brody, I'm now convinced why Girona is so popular among cyclists, but we're in early season, February, this time of the year, you're normally in Australia, aren't you? Yeah, pre-pandemic I would have been in Australia racing Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race, the uh, Santos Tour Nananda and uh, Race Torquay, um, and usually the Australian Nationals too, but unfortunately the last two years I have not made it back to Australia. But uh, it's not so bad because as you can see, training for winter here is actually really nice. The sun's normally always out, the roads are good, so I'm not complaining too much. <laughs> and I imagine you're not closer to what the season's gonna kick for you, right? Tour of Valencia. How's the preparation been going so far? Um, it's been really good actually, because uh, we had our team camp down uh, in Altea, so actually quite close to where some of the stages are. And it's just good to get in those base Ks, you know, stress-free. Although I love being in Australia in January, there's often a lot of kind of travel involved and trying to squeeze in family time and relaxing time. And 
you know, traveling across different states. So I've found that the kind of consistency and focus I've been able to have um, in the European winter has prepared me for the season really well. And the season is starting earlier every year in Europe. So it's nice to be here and not worry about jet lag. Um, yeah. <laughs> Ready to race. And one of these races of the early season will be Omloch in Jusblad, I imagine. Yep. Your background is mountain biking, you're very skilled. How are the cobbles? How are you feeling them? I'm quite lucky that I took to the cobbles pretty quickly. I didn't find them too technically challenging. In fact, I quite enjoy being able to really feel the bike underneath you and um, knowing what it feels like to put down power on um, uneven surfaces. Uh, yeah, it will be, I will be racing on Loot Hep Newsblad, but uh, I wouldn't say it's really my speciality. It's a lot of uh, accelerating out of corners. So that's something I'm working on, but it's always just a good atmosphere, the opening weekend. And I really do get excited when I go to Belgium. And when I have that feeling, it's just like, you know, it's like racing's on, you know, it's the hardest racing there. <laughs> but 2022 with the return to the France is meant to be the new evolution, the next evolution of women's cycling. How the team, especially such a traditional team like yours and with such an, so much experience in it, is looking forward to to the France? Oh, it's definitely like, the number one goal for our team. I mean, FTG is a sponsor of the Tour de France as well as our team. And they've had a lot to do with like, uh, I guess, championing, championing women's cycling. Um, we have some really, really big French talent on our team as well. So it's like all roads lead to the Tour de France for us this year. And it's just awesome to see that um, it's finally going to have the attention it deserves. And it's amazing. I've been a professional for this will be my fourth year and already I've seen women's cycling come in leaps and bounds. Like it's a true career now for um, if you're racing in the world tour. And I think that that alone is going to see the level just jump every year. So I got to keep up. <laughs> Keeping up, going uphill as well. I imagine, have you checked some of those climbs of uh, Tour de France? I haven't actually <clears throat> been to those parts of France yet. I've certainly seen the profile. I'm looking forward to the gravel stage. And I like that they've kind of put the big climbs towards the end of the tour. So I imagine we'll see a lot of people really going for stage wins in the early days and the GC riders kind of biding their time towards the end. Um, it's going to be a new experience for all of us. So, you know, even having the visibility might make breakaways a bit different. Um, and having it not so long after our Giro as well. So it is, it is a, a big step in, I think, the future of women's cycling. And how about the World Championships? Wollongong, Australia. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's also my second big goal. Um, I would love to be selected for that race. And the thing is, every Australian wants to be selected for the home race. Um, that's why I'm spending time on the TT bike. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping that's one of my ins. Um, <clears throat> but it's a beautiful area. Like it's going to overlook the ocean. Um, the weather's going to be beautiful in September. I have actually ridden Mount Kira before. I did my first ever strength efforts on Mount Kira. So I have uh, mixed memories of it, but I think, you know, it, it's going to be the people that make the race hard. So work all year in Europe and hopefully spend a bit more time in Australia next year. I'm sick of winter, actually. Although, I mean, you can't really call this winter now no, in Spain. <laughs> no, no, especially in Girona. Well, it's, it's been a pleasure, Brody. Uh, very nice to meet you. Very nice riding with you Thank and you. hopefully see you soon. Next see you soon time. for another ride. Hopefully. <laughs> Thank Thanks. you. Are you, if you look at me, you're comfortable? Yeah. With Just. your eyes? Just. Do you want me to... That's Where do you feel comfortable? <laughs> Where do you feel comfortable? Um, no, it's fine. I'll just cop it. Yeah? yeah. 